weekly sit-down with local agricultural leaders and businesses. This is Tailgate Conversations. Presented by Pinnegar Chevrolet. Beginning in 1969, growing to four stores and nearly 200 employees and 80,000 customers. It's time to hear the rest of the SNH story. So 50 years is a long time to be in business, and today, employing nearly 200 employees, you've been a part of SNH for 28 years, and I understand it all started right here at this counter? It was right here, Jamie, um, January 7th, 1991. Wow. Yeah, so uh, it's been quite a journey. Um, as a farm boy, I don't think anything could have fit me better. You know, uh, like Wayne, shared a passion for agriculture, still engaged actively, um, like to see people succeed. To go from, I think, 21 employees at the time to nearly 200 now, it's been quite a journey. And your role today in the company? Today, they call me the corporate service manager, or <laughs> corporate sales manager. Mm -hmm. um, and I supervise the four stores, lead the team in sales, service, parts, um, really try to choose a good direction and uh, encourage people, empower them, uh, let them go to work, and uh, help value the trade-ins, trucking fleet, all those things that you never dream about doing as you, as you grow through life and you think, yeah, here we are. So over these years, what would you attribute to um, uh, the success of SNH and and how, and how that has um, really been defined with the employees and customers? So I think the success started with Wayne, and uh, you know, He's been like a second father figure to me. And I've really um, tried to listen to him through all of life, not just in business, but in life. And so uh, he was always looking for ways to succeed in his own operation mm -hmm. and then sharing those with every customer that he got in contact with. Um, just a conversation about how you, how you su can succeed in your farm operation, what makes a difference. And uh, he was always looking for things that added value to an operation, either made you more profitable, more efficient, more comfortable, added scale, uh, um, any of those things, but it's always been um, value. He's always looked for things with value, um, and that, that was deeply instilled in, in our operation. We always said that you could, it, it was better to make two quick nickels than one slow dime, and that was something that Wayne said a lot, and uh, it's been a, a grounding philosophy of business for us. Well, over the years, um, you've transitioned into a leader in the company, but your team leader has always been Wayne. So how has he, um, or what has he instilled in you um, professionally and personally that, you know, is, is truly heartfelt? Yeah. yeah, like I said before, Wayne, Wayne uh, is like a second father to me, but as a business leader, uh, many things. Uh, number one, we're going to treat people the way you want to be treated. Uh, the application of the golden rule. I think it's core to, to the business value. Um, don't ask an employee to do a job you're not willing to do. Um, bid on what you see with your own eyes and feel with your own hands. Those kind of things. You know, I can remember um, as, a, as a newlywed or a young parent, um, Wayne was always making sure that we were prepared for Valentine's Day and weren't forgetting birthdays because he wanted to, to be successful in our personal life as well as our business life, you know, and, and uh, get, he, he would say, get involved in your community, you know, make a difference. And so he always encouraged us to get involved in school board or soil and water or whatever it might be. And, uh, and he was good to, to support you in those endeavors. I, I remember, um, you know, work ethic, I think, no one worked harder than Wayne. There were many times as a young sales guy, we'd have a program that we would be here at uh, 10 o'clock at night, writing tickets, doing sales work. You know, all the programs were handwritten at that point in time. I remember uh, one December 31st, we were right down to the wire and we had a big deal. And uh, the deal had to be postmarked, December 31. Mm -hmm. So I got it done about 10.30 that night and drove to Springfield to the post office because it was the only place open that could get a stamp on it. And so those are some of the neat things that down through life and just made that cool stories. Yeah, yeah, and, and he was he was here right beside me the whole time. Just I, I think the overwhelming thing was I, I I don't know of anyone who wanted other people, customers, employees, family, 
to succeed and he never had a single jealous moment. He never envied anyone else's success. He wanted to create it for himself and everyone he touched. So who is Wayne Schnelli? You know, the big key thing about my father, um, you know, even at 87 today, he's passionate about agriculture. From still managing his own farm um, with, with, you know, corn, beans, wheat, and cattle, to being active in the business. You know, he wants to come up here every day he can. I'll pick him up some mornings and he'll stay till noon. And he's still, you know, like still at 87, he wants to be a part of agriculture. Well, from a business that began at the kitchen table and two brother-in-laws and that relationship to what we see today, a full service, um, fully stocked uh, venue for um, farmers of all shapes and sizes. How did that transition and that timeline come to be? Well, I mean, it grew fairly slowly for several years. And in 1974, um, then they, they built the building where we're at here today, uh, south of Lockwood. Well, you mentioned uh, the Missouri State Ag Department and, and you know, the involvement with FFA, and I know that was a foundation for your dad. Um, so when it comes to the community and that, not just the business, but the extended community and then the expansion of stores, um, those two organizations have been key. Yes, uh, and you know, my father, a, a lot of his passion came from FFA. He was very active in FFA. Uh, that would probably been in the late 40s, early 50s. You know, he was a chapter officer, he was state FFA president, he was in the first FFA National Chorus, and you know, FFA was his passion. Um, through the years, we've always been active in 4-H, and uh, really active with, with the Ag Department at Missouri State. He was on the advisory board there, and, and just it's just a great, a great place for, for Southwest Missouri for people to, to learn about Ag and, and embrace Ag. So, He's, he's really done that all through his life, is, is just a true passion for agriculture in, in many different areas. I was always really wanting to find out an improvement rather than just keep doing the same old thing all the time. So that really made a difference when you're doing it yourself, you can figure out what you need to do to improve it all the time. What's been the most enjoyable part, and this most enjoyable memory over these years, building these businesses and, and creating this team, this family? meeting so many people and feel like you're you're helping them because you're one of them you're doing the same thing and you feel the same way and so it wasn't like we came from the city and started this or something this was home yeah. and these were neighbors so looking back over those many years did you ever have an idea back then that you would have four stores across Southwest Missouri and that you'd have you know, over 80,000 customers and over 200 employees? Not at all. My theory back then when he was so ambitious was I said, we'll do it as long as we do it under one roof. We're not having another roof. <laughs> Until Eric came along and he said, Mom, Springfield store is available and we need it. I said, okay. So that blew my theory right there, and I haven't been a bit sorry. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was nice that, uh, you know, when Eric graduated, that uh, he, he was interested to do it. And that is really nice when you have one of your family. And, and he, he has always been really good with people, you know, and uh, that, that's worked out great. And he learned that from you, too. Yeah, I think so. You know, being a farmer myself, I could see all of the things that people needed and we would have them here. We was always the first one to try something and make it work. So they come in a lot and say, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And, uh, you know, give them honest advice to it and uh, it worked. They trusted you. It's almost like uh, being a, a teacher to them. And, uh, so I, that's, that's the thing that I really enjoyed. I, I always told people, I said, don't be afraid to try something. But if it don't work, quit. <laughs> don't keep doing it.